Hi, Sixers. We forgot to mention this when we were recording the episode, but we've got another giveaway going on. We'll announce the winners during our next episode on June 20th, but first, you've got to enter. We'll have a post up about this contest on each of our social media accounts on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. To enter, reply to that post and answer this question. If you were one of Stephen Leeds' aspects, what role would you fill? Entries close at 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time on June 19th, which is the night before we record. So make sure to get your entries in before then. Thanks a lot and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Hello, Sixers, and welcome back to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. Tonight we're recording episode 111, and it is June 6th, 2022. I'm Bill, and I'm joined, as always, by my genius co-hosts, Amy and Jordan. True. Uh, Rated is true. (laughs) Obvious. Something tells me that the uh, survey panel is a little biased, but okay. (laughs) What? I'm not making a clip of this. (laughs) Anyway. Before we get started, we want to remind you that the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is not a spoiler-free podcast. Normally, that would mean that if there's something in the Cosmere you haven't read and are worried about hearing spoilers, you might want to go read those first and come back and join the discussion after. But tonight, we are again on a non-Cosmere book, and this one is a super fast read. I actually just reread it again today, to uh, all today, to uh, prep for this episode. Because tonight we are talking about another of my favorite pieces that Brandon has written, Legion. Mm-hmm. Written at the same time as uh, Emperor Soul. He was on fire during that time. Oh, yeah. yes. Uh, for those of our listeners who listen to the podcast recordings or watch the videos on YouTube after the fact, we do want to remind you it's possible for our listeners to interact with us live via chat as we record each episode at www.twitch.tv slash table. We record episodes of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies every other Monday night, starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, so please join us and take an active part in the discussion. The show is, of course, made possible by the support of our listeners and patrons. It will, of course, continue to be free, but if you want to help out, head on over to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies, even a buck or two per episode. That is wonderful. It helps us as we work to continually improve the show. Patrons get immediate access to our Discord channel where we talk about the show, we talk about the Cosme, we talk about life, we talk about wonderful, wonderful conversations. And yes, mostly we, pets. There's a, there's a lot. I added a pet channel and suddenly it's been flooded. <laughs> All the puppies and kitties and horses. I think that's yep. what we have. So. Seriously, the horses I didn't expect. But I'll, there's I'll be honest. Wonderful. Not one mm. Rashadium, though. I've been very disappointed. Oh. Uh, seriously though it's a it's an amazing community we love these people um you also will get early access to bonus episodes and exclusive access to other bonus content and other good stuff speaking of bonus episodes jordan why don't you tell you tell us what's going on with the uh quick six uh yes we finally got up the first quick six for those of you who are like wait that sounds familiar i feel like they talked about that it's because we did we hit a goal for it and then uh promptly had all sorts of weirdness go on but now now it is up and we are good to go the first quick six is up for early access for all those who are patrons for those of you who are not patrons you know you can get that now if you want just become a patron hint hint wink wink not judge you know you know but the uh, if not, you just want to wait. It's about Reen. I did the first one. Just a quick little thing. Just topics that maybe aren't quite big enough for a full episode by themselves. And we're each going to tackle one a month. So and that boom, will be live on the thirteenth, right of June for everybody. For for, for non patrons, yeah. For non patrons, yeah. Uh, sometime on the thirteenth, yes. Cool. I had to go consult it. <laughs> a calendar, yeah. Uh, calendar. So if I didn't trust my ability to add seven to six, apparently. (laughs) 
So if you want to listen to Jordan ramble on for a few minutes about Reen, Vin's brother, then you should check it out. Yeah. Um, again, back to Jordan, though. You've also got the read-along, the Cosmere reread. How is that going? Yes. Okay. If uh, you haven't gotten enough of Jordan for your day, <laughs> the Cosmere reread is now also back on track. The... Uh... The madness of everything that's been going on with me and YouTube has finally come <laughs> to a, a still, and I now can uh, actually progress on on normal projects. Uh, we had to amend the schedule a little bit, so some of these uh, sections will be a little bit bigger. For those of you who forgot, all it is is we're just trying to reread everything in Era 2, including Secret History, before Lost Metal comes out. It has mm-hmm. been, so far, really fun. The biggest problem is I want to keep reading and I have to stop because I have to cover certain sections and talk mm-hmm. about them first. We've had a patron or two chime in in the Discord mentioning that they did that exact thing. <laughs> like I yeah. just, I, I'm in the third book now. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Oops. I read Oops, the whole all thing. era too. Um, <laughs> the the next the next one we're doing is chapters twelve through eighteen. I had it written down. Yes, twelve through eighteen of Alloy of Law. If you have any questions you'd like to have me answer concerning chapters 12 through 18, be sure to post them. We have a channel in our Discord for the reread. Post them there. And yeah, we'll cover them. Yeah. Cool. Good, good. And we also, we've talked about possibly starting a, uh, a new segment for the show. We're just going to, I think we're just calling it Cosmere Thing of the Week until we come up with a better title. And we may not come up with a better title. I don't know. But we like it. Cosmere Thing of the Week. Boink. <laughs> um, so Jordan, do you want to pull that up and show it off? Basically, this is, you know, for, for fan art or just something cool Cosmere based that we've come across over the past I guess couple of weeks, but we're going to call it thing of the week anyway, because it, it flows better than yeah. thing of the couple weeks. By week. Thing of the fortnight. Yeah. No. Ooh, like people, pe- except people will link it to the game, and oh, I just don't true. even want Well, there's only one Cosmer thing of fortnight, so it'd get really yeah. repetitive. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> Kelsey, here's in Fortnite every week. No. So yeah. this actually, um, we came across in a in a group that, an online group that Amy and I are in from Mm -hmm. at Parmador designs. She designed a onesie for her child based on the stormlight archive. It's awesome. And it's kind of adorable. It does glow in the dark Mm -hmm. and it, you know, talks about cuddle sprin and giggle sprin and nap sprin and all, all the little sprin that are attracted by infants. It's absolutely adorable. It's super cute. I don't see anything it. about poop spin or crying spin. Well, though. you're not trying to keep it a little more PG, right? And positive. Um, I, I, don't I, I don't think that goes outside of PG. But, well, I know. Yeah. But do you really want to think about an, an infant with poop spin versus something else? You know, like giggle spin. I don't know. As someone who's dealt with uh, toddlers a time or two, I can I can affirm these things do occur. Oh, oh yes. I'm not denying they occur. I'm just saying, do you want to talk about that? Or well, I just, I thought maybe you were just better at parenting than everyone else. <laughs> no, I think Amy's just repressing memories. Yes, so. yes, I totally am. People no will wonder say, like, she likes. Shalom. Don't you remember kid? Kid, this did that, and I'm like, oh, oh, you're right. They did. I forgot that for my sanity. Oh yeah, okay. So, so okay. yeah, so I, I just thought that was really cool and decided mm-hmm. to show it. So, uh, it's very cool. That's pretty awesome. So if you're listening, Parmador Designs, thanks for for creating that. It's kind of awesome. Very cute. This has been another episode. This has been another segment of Cosmere Thing of the Week. Boink. I don't know. We're figuring that part out. It's a work in progress. Anyway. Nailed it first try. (laughs) Stamp it. (laughs) Moving on. So on to Legion. Guys, this is seriously one of my favorite things that Brandon's written. I've, I've talked about that with The Emperor's Soul. This came out around the same time. I powered through it in about an hour and just loved it. And yeah, because it's so different. It's very different, yeah, from a lot of other stuff. Now, one of the cool things, f- first off, that we just want to let people know about, make sure that they're aware, it would be tomorrow as we're recording this, it will be yesterday on the day that this releases. Mm-hmm. Um, there's going to be a new audio book in the series coming out 
tomorrow or yesterday, whichever time period you're in, called Leeds Death and Faxes. Because was, Brandon was enjoys Stephen these. Leeds? I thought it was Stephen Leeds. Stephen, Stephen Leeds, Death and Faxes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Which is such a fun name. Because Brandon basically finished the main trilogy around Stephen Leeds, and now he sort of wants to move into more episodic content. Mm. When he first wrote this book, he imagined it like a TV series. And as I, I remember, as I fi- when I finished, I was like, I want a show on this. I really <laughs> want a show based on this. It'd be fun, yeah. It's got a great cast of characters. It's got a great premise, and just it 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 would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, about six years ago, there was a show called Legion that Disney put out based on the Marvel property. Mm. And so Brandon decided that kind of killed the possibility of calling this show Legion and thought about possibly rebranding it as Leeds instead of Legion. Um, I think at this point, the show kind of didn't pan out as huge as it was going to. So I think he could actually still call it Legion and it'd be fine. But I don't know. Maybe just have a colon and some other text with but it. Anyway, all, I, all I know is that Legion season one apparently is super good. I'm told. I, I don't, don't know. know. I never saw it. I don't even know who Legion is. Uh, in Marvel. the comic books, he's the son of uh, Charles Xavier, multiple personalities, psychic powers. It's fun. I have no clue what they do with the show, though. Yeah. Okay. See, so, yeah, that's one I'm not familiar with. But um, so what Brandon is going to, planning to do, though, moving forward with this property is basically making audio dramas, audio books, and with a writer's room and a showrunner. The showrunner for it is currently planned to be Brandon's mainframe partner. Mainframe is his uh, audio Audio uh, production company that he's got. So that's Max Epstein, who is planned Mm -hmm. to be the sort of showrunner for the, for Legion moving forward or Leeds or Stephen Leeds or whatever the brand is. (laughs) So he's going to be sort of, Moving I, forward. I, if they, as far as titles go, I hope they go with like the many lives of Stephen Leeds. I think is a mm. well, that's the the that's, seri- the, that's one, the name of the collection. The the three yeah, the and three that's, book that's, collection. And I I think that is a good title for a serial, but possible. We'll you yeah. know, Who I don't know that he'll do way. that simply because it already belongs to a an existing property that he created. So he may not mm. do that. I don't know. We don't know. But, but of everything Brandon's written, this is the easiest thing to adapt. Absolutely. Yeah. It's very, very accessible for all sorts of audience. It, it's because it would fit the standard police procedural. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and the quote unquote magic only really requires uh, more people and maybe some green screen stuff occasionally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they've got the technology for doing that. Yeah. So. No, th- th- this would be a very, very adaptable property. And it's also probably my favorite of all of his non-Cosmere stuff. Really? More so than... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think so. That surprises me. Sorry, I'm having trouble understanding <laughs> right now. We weren't talking to you. Not now, Alexa. <laughs> now is not the time. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so moving on into the book, though. So let's talk about the premise. Stephen Leeds, who is he? He's this rich, eccentric guy who lives in a mansion, and all of the bedrooms are for his different personalities. Or what does he call them? They're not. They're not aspects. Aspects. aspects that's right. And he has a butler, and he has a poor maid that is probably not going to last very long because she's a little too weirded out. But the butler's very smart and handles him well. That's the. the- the premise is very interesting. Br- Brandon obviously loves to explore the idea of personality uh, disorders as a superpower at times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think partially inspired by the fact that he used his own insomnia as a superpower and just said, wow, if I don't sleep, I can just put out more books and <laughs> just went with that concept and it's it's a very fast like it's a take on it i've never seen before because i've seen people try and do disassociative identity disorder mm-hmm. sort of this way before i can't think in what but i know i've seen it 
but this is a whole new take on it where th- they are still him, but he's compartmentalized it and he can he has to bring them on as part of his own neuroses. It's yeah, it's the reason that they're created because he's he's not just he doesn't just have, you know, uh not schiz- whatever disorder this is. Mm-hmm. And and it's it, you know, in the book they said it's not really fully quantified. It's not really anything established. But the reason he does it is because he's an absolute genius and his abilities terrify him. Mm-hmm. And so he kind of compartmentalizes it, lives himself as a quote regular guy, and anything he learns, he creates a new personality or an a new aspect to handle that. that that only he can see mm-hmm. that's basically a fully fleshed out individual who helps him through it. And he, basically they're living reference books. Yeah. Yeah. I, and you, you I see think him was... make a new one in the book too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two, two new well, ones. One at the very end. At the end. Oh, that's or right. No. I forgot about that one. No, the, uh, I liked Monica a lot her idea that he sort of does it because he wants to live the lie that he's a normal person. Mm -hmm. And this is his way of pretending he's normal and not this super genius. Well, and, and you notice when she says that it bothers him, Mm -hmm. it really upsets him. I mean, well, it's, all of them don't like their little whatever it is that's because they every single one of his personalities also has a neuroses of some kind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. He doesn't listen and all, but not, he goes and none and of like, none of them like their neuroses pointed out. No, I, I I love the first line where you know I I am not insane, but but my Aspects what is it? Are... The, like the other the personalities, the books. my hallucinations. Yeah. My hallucinations are all quite, are all quite, are all quite mad. mad. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just an interesting premise. Mm-hmm. And, and it's a very Brandon premise. Yes. It's like this guy's not crazy, but his hallucinations are. And like one of them even has another hallucination too. Like yeah. One, one of them ha- is schizophrenic. And Tobias. Ha- and Tobias. Oh, yeah. See, I can't who, remember all the names. Who I can't picture anyone playing, but Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Cause Morgan oh, there Freeman. was some, uh, I'm trying to remember who, uh, I can't remember the name. May- maybe, um, Tony, I want the, maybe Tony Todd, the guy who played Warlock in the new Top Gun film. <laughs> I <laughs> liked him. I could see Tony Todd doing it as well. Who's Tony Todd? I'm not familiar with that. Tony one. Todd's been in a bunch of stuff. You'd recognize him if you saw him. He's got oh a very God. distinctive voice too. Okay. Um. Yeah, you, know, you pull, pull him up on IMDb. You'll recognize him almost immediately. But, but yeah, uh, challenge accepted. No, Tobias is such a great character. He's just this comforting, warm presence, mm-hmm. very soothing. And, and then uh, in the, in the audio book, uh, I can't remember who does it. It's not his normal person. He does a good job with. He's the, a phenomenal, phenomenal job. Oliver the the Oliver. Um, what was the something Todd? Uh, uh, to- is it Tony Todd or Toby Todd? I thought you said Tony, oh, but I, don't I said know. Tony Todd, but now I'm second guessing myself. The Candy Man? I don't know. Yeah, I recognize him because he's the Candy Man, one of the most identifiable slasher <laughs> villains ever. Okay. I don't know. No, I. I, I know him from like he he's he's somebody who shows up in a lot of stuff. He I think he was in The Rock. He was he in, was in The Rock. Yeah, he was he's in The in, Crow. He was in an episode of Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. He played Old Jake. Oh, okay. I do he, remember that episode. He's he, he's all over the place. Anyway, I could see him doing doing uh, Tobias Tobias as well. What was Tobias's specialty? And again, I can't remember philosophy philosophy yeah. okay philosophy yeah. and history and sort like of, of his moral compass he's the, a little bit yeah the the, ge- the generic knowledge guy he knows mm-hmm. history he knows philosophy he knows architecture and he just he's sort the of, wikipedia yeah. yeah and then ivy is his psychiatrist his mm-hmm. internal 
psychiatrist. He had he has a real world one. psychiatrist that he visits and an internal. And doesn't one, like it doesn't like the real world psychologist. Mm-hmm. And then there's JC is, it, the, is, is the it JC Navy Steel. JP doesn't want to be no, it's JC. JC JC yeah. Crap. And I think he like there's some line about how he doesn't want to be called a marine. He likes to be he's a Navy Steel and he'd get really bothered if you called him a marine. Well, which makes sense because yeah. There, there's all those rivalries between the different branches of the military. Mm-hmm. But these are sort of the three major aspects. And then later on, we also get um, Kehlani. Oh, yes. Is, is it like Kehlani? Kehlani? Kehlani, I think it yeah, was. Ke- Ke- Kehlani, um, yeah. who is his interpreter. Well, yeah, he just flips through a, a book of Hebrew stuff. Right. Is that what he right Hebrew? Yeah, it was Hebrew. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so he can do that. So let's talk about that scene where Kilani is basically created. Because I think that's absolutely fascinating. You know, he gets on a plane. He, because he's, I love that he is so wealthy because people kept coming to him for help and he didn't want to do it. So he would quote them ridiculous prices and, and they still it. paid for it. And there'd be, it, and people would pay him to study him too. Mm-hmm. So that's how he and got so, a bunch of money too. And so eventually he became incredibly wealthy. And because of that, he was able to sort of cover his, his neuroses, um, account for it by buying a mansion with several rooms, one for each of his aspects. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when he flies to Israel, he buys a seat for each of his aspects as well yeah. as an extra seat for, for the, new one he's the aspect make. that he's creating. It's Kalyani. Kal- Kalyani. That's it. Kalyani. Kalyani. Sorry, sorry. I've listened to the audiobook most most recently. Oh, it's been okay. several just, years I since I first read it. Because I well, kind of forget names. One of my favorite things about the aspects was apparently uh, Brandon based them on actors and actresses in real life. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, someone asked him at uh, one of his signings, how does he keep Legion straight? And Brandon said, uh, I cheated a little bit in Legion and based each personality off an actor. He, uh, Did he name them? Uh, JC was based off Adam Baldwin in Firefly. Ah! So, <laughs> Jane. Nice. Uh, JC Ivy's is J- apparent, apparently Ivy's Gwyneth Paltrow. Wait, wait, wait. JC is Jane Cobb. Yeah. <laughs> and John Casey. <laughs> That's funny. Gwyneth Paltrow. And so, yeah. Ivy. Gwyneth Paltrow's Ivy... Uh, that's the only ones I found. Okay. I'll bet Tobias was Morgan Freeman. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, at least. I could see that. But yeah. Well, that's great. I love that. I'll um, see if I can find any others. But, but yeah. But seriously, the um, the audiobook narrator is just he he does he's amazing with his voices and accents. Hmm. Like each character feels very distinct. Well, um, I mean, because they are they they, they all are, come right? be just like built in with their own flaws and their own strengths and their own mm-hmm. uh the, their little the little quirks here and there and different biases because like they're like Kalyani is supposed to be someone who's from India. And then mm-hmm. we have like all these different nationalities and stuff too. So it's right. It's interesting. One of them believes that he's a deposed king. Oh, that's right. I don't remember. I don't think we meet that one. We do meet him. We do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's our that's our Armando. Armando. He's Armando. the one who looks at the photograph. Oh, that's right. There's too many of them. But, but no. oh, there's only forty four. What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's just no, not gonna happen. So we've talked about the aspects and sort of the background and it works really well as a pilot for mm-hmm. a show in my opinion. Oh yeah. But uh, let's talk about the actual plot of this book. So it's all about a magic camera kind yeah. of. It a, a is. Sci- it's, no, a magic, it's, it's a magic camera. It's a science camera. Yes. Actually the camera is quite normal we learn. But it's. It, it's yeah. the magic so, bulb. Go, You know yes that's there's your spoiler it's the magic bulb. Well we've already um, given. Well, yeah if, if you didn't know then there you go. It was interesting reading it through this time because I don't think I'd read it really I think this is maybe my third time 
but I, I couldn't remember what part of the camera it was that was special. Mm. And I kept trying to figure out what it was. And I, yeah. So when it was the bulb, I was like, Oh, how did I forget that again? Though I did notice when it like the, the guard or whatever is um, talking about the guy, the fact that he's like, he's using the flash like all the time. That's really weird. And leads picks up on that. Yeah. Well, and the thing that's him, not his aspects too. That was the fun part. Yeah. Well, the thing I, I really like about just coming up with all these different concepts is you see him have debates within himself. Mm-hmm. Um, because one of the things is they go through the apartment and they're they're all picking up on different things about their their mark. But JC looks and he's, you know, he sees, hey, he's got a gun, but it doesn't look like it's ever been fired. That's odd for this reason. And it's, and it's right next to his door. <laughs> you know, so yeah. he's paranoid and whatever else. Yeah, and then you're just like, okay, well, he's been eating in. Okay, oh, he's got all this religious stuff. Uh, he's been debating with people online. Mm-hmm. And these are all these things that uh, they're, they're all picking up on individual little things. It's It reminds me very much, um, I mean, it, obviously, anytime you're doing a detective story, you immediately compare it to Sherlock Holmes. But um, I'm thinking of uh, just specifically the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes, mm-hmm. where we get to see really quickly and it's showing it's like this, 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 you know, he sees everything because he's compartmentalized it. You know, it's everyone else noticing things and they're having a dialogue yeah. and they're workshopping it as a team. And it's a very y- unique approach to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and you see th- that's one of the useful things about having Monica around is she's the, the, she's the everyman. She's the perspective that we get from the outside. Mm-hmm. You know, because right now we're seeing everything from his perspective because he is our narrator. And yeah. we kind of need a look at, okay, what's actually from the outside to figure out what's actually going on. Mm-hmm. And he, he comments several times in this inside the text where he's like, Oh, this character who Monica can't see, you know? Mm-hmm. And so like, he's fully aware that no one else sees him. And it just, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. That but they're so he is... fleshed out, but so hallucination mm-hmm. still. He, he's such an interesting example of the unreliable narrator. Because he's one of the most reliable, unreliable narrators you're going to get because he's very, very honest about what is happening. Yeah. But he's all, there are things that he lies to himself about still. And so it's just sort of, it's almost like a, a dishonest person you could always trust to be dishonest if the honest ones you have to worry about. Yeah. yeah. Jack Sparrow. Mm hmm. No, the uh, I find it interesting that, that Brandon would go with this approach just because in some ways I, I almost feel like Brandon already does this in when he's writing dialogue in his books normally is he has to mentally put himself in, you know, the shoes of all these different characters at the same time. Mm-hmm. And now he's literally come up with a character that he just has to do it for period. Yeah. No. Um uh, okay, so let's talk about this magic camera. Yeah, so <clears throat> the premise, like the idea of this time traveling camera, again, this is Brandon exploring an idea and you know, sucking the marrow out of it, getting all of the possibilities and you know, th- for example, the idea that you could place a camera in just the right place at the right angle and take a picture of the inside of a bag as a messenger rides by. Oh yeah. Or that went by last week mm-hmm. and, and you find the information or all those different things, like anywhere that you've, you've ever undressed there, it is right there. It's a possibility. It's a problem, which is utterly or horrifying. Anything. Yeah. It's, it's scary. Well, especially well, and- because like, it, you know, with, with the whole modern day concept of a peeping Tom slash stalker slash whatever, mm-hmm. they can get caught with this. Yeah. You can't yeah. really get taught because you can do it at any time and it doesn't matter. It's mm-hmm. well, and you were I there. like, yeah, I like that Monica and her company, they're clearly 
like thinking this through. Mm-hmm. Like what this this is a this is a game changer in the biggest sense of the word. This would destroy society. Yeah. yeah. Or at the very least, it would like the version of it that exists can't exist anymore when you can know 100 percent there's no such thing as there's no such thing as not being able to know if someone was there or something Mm -hmm. which leads to very interesting questions on you know and because he he created a character that is a is a believer Mm -hmm. and he wants to sort of do both at the same time, both believe and improve it. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I like is they have these, like they have these intensely philosophical debates, you know, within their own little circle as to what this would mean and what Mm -hmm. it wouldn't mean, or maybe this would mean something. And it's, it's done, actually done fairly economically in terms of a word count, which is a weird thing to think of with Brandon, because mm-hmm. you know, economic is uh, not normally something we associate with Brandon, given the size of his normal books. But he, his writing style is actually in terms of like he doesn't. This is actually far, one of his more flowery books in terms of his prose. Um He'll he'll uh, he'll he'll make comparisons to things that normally he'll put things very clinically because he's trying to get out of the way and just let the story do the talking. Mm-hmm. But here he you know he'll throw in a few flowery things. I'm trying to remember one of them where he's talking about you know like buildings bowing you know or shadows bowing before the build. I don't know. He he makes some similes and metaphors that I think in some of his longer books he doesn't he won't make as much probably because he has so much that he has to fit into the book that he, he can't, he can't afford it. That, that Mm. might've been when he was, um, when Leeds was inspecting the church building and talking to the guard, that might've been that section. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There there were a couple spots, but definitely there. I also really like him showing how he, why he's so useful the the business people are looking around. Hey, have you seen this guy? And he understands. Ain't nobody gonna remember that. Mm-hmm. But and then he discovers point... two of his aspects making out. Let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little bizarre. It was bizarre. It was funny, and it, it was interesting because he did note. Okay, I don't know uh... what this means. Like because. What does this say about me? How is this going? What's going on? Yeah, because those are two aspects that he thought hated each other. And now they here they are making out. And he's like, uh, I can't analyze that right now. But that's going to be a later figure out what's going on there. Because that's, that's a whole can of worms. Yeah. And remember, yeah. there are there are two additional books to follow up on some of the okay. premises. I still out. haven't read them. I need to. Yeah, it's uh, definitely worth well, yeah. it's very interesting because Ivy sort of represents his uh, very intellectual side, mm-hmm. and JC represents the practicality side, and those are the two that are that are sneaking around and making out with each other. <laughs> and it like psychologist field day is what that is. Oh like, yeah. <laughs> and I love him just sitting there, just wondering. Uh, I don't know what this means. I can't, I can't, I can't analyze this right now. Oh, uh, I don't know how Brandon came up with this concept, but it's brilliant. I love it. And, uh, I love that concept. It's just, cause the thing is, if you, if you want to sit there and say, Oh, these are very, uh, very distinct personalities. You got to give them room to breathe. Because they have they have stories of their own, and he's losing control of them. Mm-hmm. And well, and the uh, the later books start to go into that. It's it's really it it gets very interesting hmm. and a little bit dark, actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I just wonder if, if again, because I Brandon's talked about this before, where uh, his sometimes he talks about, you know, when he's writing characters, sometimes in a scene, they'll go directions that he's not anticipating just Mm because he's trying to let the scene flow. Mm -hmm. And again, he's created a story where that's, that's happening to 
the character himself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's Inception. There we go. Yeah, I, th- I think I think that's part of where Brandon kind of got the idea is like my characters aren't doing what I tell them to. And they're just okay. And the characters' characters aren't doing what he expects them to either. So. And, and and who knows? Maybe uh, Tobias's astronaut friend will start doing things that he doesn't expect them to. Yeah. Let's just see how deep this rabbit hole goes. <laughs> Forty-two. But yeah, um, it's interesting because with Brandon's, most of Brandon's books, the characters are are very important and they drive the plot, Mm -hmm. but the plot is still very, very important. In this, the plot isn't the most important aspect or the most interesting aspect. The plot's almost secondary. Yeah. And I remember when I read the second book, uh, skin deep. I remember thinking the plot again, it just didn't grab me, but watching these characters interact was so fascinating and entertaining mm-hmm. that I didn't care what was going on in the background or why they, why they were in the situations they were. I just wanted to see how they behaved. And, and it, it, I don't know. And that's what I love about this series. Hmm. Yeah, well, it's partially because one, he set up a, a rule system for his, this this particular. It's magic um, that you know. Okay, I gotta make room for them, and mm-hmm. it's interesting to see how the aspects try and accommodate that rule system. Mm-hmm. Like even simple things like, hey, Monica, can you wait out here? It's a little cramped, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and she's sort of what? Oh. Right, oh, okay. I'm dealing with a crazy You're doing person. Your thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. And and she, you know, she points that out at, at the end, and it, like we said, it really, really upsets him. But yeah, he has rooms for them. The fact that he wanted the engineer aspect to come when he was looking at the um, at the camera, but, but he, he was couldn't across the water because yeah, he, he was, was across the the world, and. You know, Monica's like, well, can't you just summon him? He's like, it doesn't work that way. He's over there. You know? It's, And that just sort of shines a light on what a fragile precipice this whole system is sitting on top of. Mm-hmm. Well, I just love so many times, but sometimes being a nerd and having a conversation with people who are non-obsessive nerds, you'll complain about, you know, some fictional show being like, this doesn't make any sense. But like, you know, it's, suddenly there's like they suddenly they can do this and they're like Mm -hmm. you're literally talking about spaceships and aliens but you're you're like this doesn't make sense you're like no it like what i'm saying makes perfect sense because the rules are made up but you Mm got to follow the rules within it it's you know it's the classic examples the harry potter books where within a book everything tends to flow fine but it's when you put the books together sometimes you're like did they just forget time mean? turners are a thing? Did they just forget that people can teleport and stuff like that? What about like this that? other thing? Or what about flus? Or oh, Yeah. And, and so it's one of those things that it's on the greater scale. You're like, ah, this is an issue. People are like, it's just, it's magic. You know, let you it go. Just, you got to let well, it go. Well, yeah. S- Stephen Leeds is, has the, this problem as well, because mm-hmm. it's like, I can't just summon them. To which if I'm Monica, I would respond, you just summoned Kailani and or Kalyani. 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 Whatever it is. Kalyani. Uh, his interpreter. Uh, I can't get in trouble for interpreter. There's no way I can mispronounce <laughs> that. Um, to which you'd be like, well, no, I was creating one then. So this, you know, she appeared here versus he's already over there. Yeah. Make another one. No, like you could sit. He's like, no, it has to remain internally consistent. Well, and, and that's the other thing. He can't make another one because that's sort of splitting his mind in yet another direction. Yeah, he already has an aspect that is that specialty, so he can't make it again. He's brilliant, but he only has so much RAM. That's where it's almost like, okay, let's, we're just going to have a whole plane, and you just bring everybody, and they just all come, and it's fine. But that's that's a lot. Except that, ha- you know, having just those few with him makes it easier for him because he only has to focus on those three. Yes. Yeah. So it would be overwhelming with too many of them. Mm-hmm. 
Well, and the other thing that's interesting is it, it the, uh, his interpreter really shows off how brilliant he is because we see him just sort of brush up on his Hebrew and she's an expert in it. He he wasn't and, brushing and, and, up. He he had he never was, learned it before. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I'm saying. Like he when I say brush up, just like, oh, he's oh, okay, I'm just gonna quickly read it. And then she's an expert in it to the point where she's critiquing his accent. Yeah, and just, he's not your able accent to, is yeah. terrible. Which is also probably something that he subconsciously does. You know, he's like, I shouldn't have a good accent because I don't know how to speak Hebrew. She has a great accent because that's what she speaks, but mm-hmm. I don't. Yeah, and so it mm-hmm. plays out that way. Again, it just has to, it fits his internal consistency. Mm-hmm. No, he can't I, break his rules. No, he can't. Well, the other thing is you'd think these characters would get along better at times just because, oh, they're a part of the same thing. It's like, oh, everyone likes Tobias. He's so nice. But mm-hmm. I it's JC completely abrasive, culturally insensitive. Mm-hmm. And you, you just start going through Armando is a complete megalomaniac. Mm-hmm. You know, you just think you all are in the same head. You should get along better. You, you know, <laughs> it kind of makes me think of the weird premise that Bob Wiley comes up with. And what about Bob? The pr- concept of if I fake it, I don't have it. And that's sort of what he's done is he's taken all these different psychological conditions, you know, stigmatized conditions, and he's put them off on other people in his mind. So do and so because he know if he already had those conditions before he was making the aspects. I'm not saying that he has them, but I'm I'm just saying he he. any any possible condition he could have, he's it's like I don't have it, they have it. He's manifesting it with them instead of Ex- exactly. Him. You know, it's again the 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 premise that Bob Wiley puts forward is if I fake it, I don't have it. He immediately fakes a heart attack, falls to the ground. And he's like, see, I was faking it, so I'm not having a heart attack because it's just a fake heart attack. Mm. It's 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 a roundabout, trippy way, you know, in a you know in a wonderful comedy that I that you know from way back in way back when was it the early 90s yeah but but it it. but it works for for Stephen Leeds because Mm. it's almost a practical version of it in a very impractical sense yes yeah but when I say a practical version of it I'm saying he's put it into practice well yeah because you know Monica's over here just some of them he's like no no that's too far (laughs) He'd have to get on a plane. I see what you did there, else. Jordan. So. Good. <laughs> People who know what about Bob will think that's hilarious. Um, no, the the other thing that was this book also it got way dark right at the end. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Where you you finally I I I feel bad for the guy because he's literally the victim in in at the end of all this, but I could never remember his name. And, uh, you know, they've cut off his hand. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. To which I'm sort of like, you, Mr. Razon, you need him to, right? you need him to fix Razon, this. Yeah. You, Razon. Razon, yeah. It's like, you need him to fix it. You cut off one half of his ability to fix. You guys are terrible so at this. Oh, you guys aren't working on that very well. You didn't think that through. Yeah. No, it definitely got, got much darker. Um, and I think part of that was just to indicate this is not a happy feel good series. This mm-hmm. is, you know, there, there is darkness behind it. And like I said, the later books start to explore the darkness behind, you know, Stephen himself and oh, his okay. situation. And so. Well, uh, the, I find, I find it interesting that whenever uh, things get sort of tense, to buy, he asked like he has Tobias as a built-in distraction mechanism. Like just because his mm-hmm. voice is so calming and soothing. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, talk to me, Tobias. And he, you know, he'll start commenting on the architecture and stuff. And like that's that is a built-in defense mechanism that we, you know most humans have that 
when they're uncomfortable to try and distract themselves with some some other detail. And he's made someone that can do that for him. So it's, if if I remember right, Tobias is the aspect he's had the longest. Yes, I believe so because he's he's an older man. Mm-hmm. Tobias is. Um, it kind of makes me think of of stimming a little bit. Stimming. Which apparently, um, that's. I'm good. If I get this wrong, I apologize for anybody who's neurodivergent. But um, it's it's like people who either have autism or or ADHD or different things, and it's it's like tapping or clicking your tongue or mm-hmm. or doing something repetitive to self soothe. Fidgeting, so fidget, yeah, yeah, fidgeting, fidgeting, fidget or, or cube, yeah. different people have different Absolutely. ways that they do it. But th- I think people have called it stimming, and you know, I, I bite my nails. I think that's the oh, term. stimulating. Okay, but they call it stimming. Yes. Yeah, S-T-I-M-S. yeah, no, but I now see the anyway, but that's, connection. I didn't connect the stimulating anyway, but that's that's something that I've heard. And, and when you were talking about Tobias, it kind of made me think of that and how people will do that, you know. And so maybe that's his way of mm-hmm. stimming is talking to Tobias. Almost certainly. Well, no, I, I like how every single aspect seems to ha- serve multiple functions. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. yes, Ivy is his interpersonal uh, <laughs> psychiatrist. I don't know what to call whatever that is. Yeah. Self-diagnoser. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But she's also his his observation like his human observational uh expert mm. it's it's sort of like if you if you make the comparison between Stephen Leeds and Shalon you know there yeah. are different aspects they're there to protect him Tobias yeah. protects him you know emotionally mm-hmm. Ivy protects him psychologically and mentally and uh JC protects him physically yeah, because I mean, there's that time where where he lets JC hold his hand and shoot the mm-hmm. gun, right? Which brings That's in crazy. a bunch of different issues of what does that mean? I know Which, you're like, yeah. oh, mm-hmm. it gets so, and and, and it it rattles him as well. Mm-hmm. I do like that uh, JC calls him skinny though. Oh, I love it. It's it's a great <laughs> you know, it's a great obnoxious nickname. It makes me think of like noir stuff a little just, bit. Just just the fact that he uses that tells you so much immediately about JC's character. Mm. You know, there there are certain characters who they st- once they start giving nicknames to people, depending on the sort of nickname they use, it tells you a lot about who they are. Yeah. Yeah. The other the other thing that's interesting about just the implication of of JC guiding his shots is the fact that his hand is shaking. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he's like, uh, and he's like, here, let me help you out, skinny. And he like the act of touching it steadies his hand, mm-hmm. which has this whole idea of what what does that mean subconsciously for what's going on in that situation? That he needs someone who's who's calm in, you know, under fire to, to steady his hand. And he's imagining someone else steadying his hand for him instead of, instead of actually calming himself down. And, you know, it, it gets to this weird metaphysical place of what is going on in your head, dude. Well, there's a lot of psychosomatic, you know, explanation with this where thinking with you know mind over matter aspects of the body it, it it really is fascinating the way it can work and of course you know this is a a Brandon Sanderson magic system in a mundane world and it just it it does work out but it it again it shines a bright light on how shaky the foundation of this is yeah that it, if something went wrong in just the right way, then there'd be huge problems for him. And if he thinks about it too much, it'll all come crashing down and he could yeah. go into a horrible mental state. Yeah. Well, because there's also the problem of that means JC is the one who made the the decisions of who to kill. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he's the one who points them here, 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 here. Whereas no one else has had the ability to make a decision for him. Mm-hmm. Everyone has just been, 
advise me here. Give me this. But in that moment, an aspect is making a decision. And that does have later implications. Yes, it does. Oh, okay. Man, dang it. I really should have read the second and third one. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about those later. Like, again, okay. we don't want to spoil. I, I just, I'm just saying that is something Please that happen. Brandon starts to explore. Okay. Yeah. But. Well, if there's anything Brandon does, it's explore <laughs> every little nook and cranny. Mm-hmm. And we love it. Yeah. Uh, oh, like he does it with the camera. He, he, you know, he minds it for, for all the implications, but not enough to where suddenly that becomes the focus of the story because yeah it's again this is he's imagining this as a tv show mm-hmm. it's not supposed to be the focus of the story right it's mm-hmm. all the characters and yeah with that. a lot of these uh police procedurals the the crimes are secondary the crimes are there to give a framework for the deeper personal interpersonal stories to unfold around it, it's kind of weird, but I keep having this comparison in my mind to like people writing fan fiction in that they'll put characters in random situations that the situation doesn't really matter all the time. Sometimes mm-hmm. it does, sometimes it doesn't. But they really just want to play out how would these characters deal with each other? How would they react in this situation? And so mm-hmm. there, are, there are quite a few fanfics that do that. And I'm, I've am i been out of the fanfic scene for a while, but I just remember that kind of being a cool thing to do sometimes is that right well and the other thing that's interesting just about this concept is because it's in the hands of brandon it i like it a lot better because it's not good it's not going to do i i think star trek's maybe the the biggest offender of this where some incredible new technology or discovery is made and then the, the next episode like the consequences of that are just sort of ignored it's gone. Mm-hmm. yeah back to the status quo yeah, status quo is God, I believe, is the trope. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> this, uh, like, Brandon sets it up in such a way where at the end of the story, if he wants to, they can recreate it if he really wants to explore this concept. But he's also set it up in such a way that he doesn't have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, I, I just, again, for uh, where he's setting this up to be episodic content. It's a very well designed situation. Yeah. And and I am so excited for tomorrow. Because <laughs> I get more. Or yesterday. <laughs> Depending on when you listen. Depending on what your uh middle state is. When you... <laughs> but no. It's it's very well written. And I, I'm I'm in awe of the fact that he he wrote Emperor Soul and Legion sort of back to back. Just boom, boom. Yeah. Now, if we've learned anything, though, Brandon is just powering out stories. <laughs> he takes a vacation he, from writing by writing something writing else. another story. Yeah. It's 120 great. secret books. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. Well, this seems like it's sort of been a shorter episode, but it's also a much shorter work. So, yeah. You know, I'm. Do we have any other major thoughts that we've got about? It's it's just we kind of fun, on? and like I'm hoping that in the second and third book that he he goes into other characters more because I I want to see more of his aspects, which is mm-hmm. it's good that he does. So thank you, Bill. But it just it's just kind of interesting. There's there's yeah. a lot of things that could be explored more, and I'm sure they are in the other mm-hmm. books. So, all right. Well, we love hearing from our listeners. So, you know, send us your questions. You can ask about the Cosmere. You can drop us your ideas for topics you want us to discuss during the show. And while you're at it, we would love to hear your feedback about how you think we're doing, as well as any interesting theories you might have about what's going on in the Cosmere and in other branded books. You can send all your questions and suggestions in a brief, concise email to Cosmere studies at gmail.com. And hopefully we'll be able to read that as part of the show. We also have a P.O. Box at the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, P.O. Box 970063, Orem, Utah, 84097. Jordan, what have you got going on outside of this podcast? 
Well, one thing I've got going on is that uh, I suddenly had to replace all four tires on my car, and I'm now $700 lighter. So right now is a really good time for you to go to my YouTube page and start watching videos over there on the Operation 4000 playlist because Jordan needs to get monetized on YouTube because he got paid for some tires. (laughs) But in all seriousness, we're uh, we're getting really close to uh, to being available for monetization. We have to get to four thousand watch hours at youtube.com slash splice stream. I've created a playlist called Operation Four Thousand. If you have a free computer or phone, <laughs> you're willing to loan to this noble cause. I would greatly appreciate it because again, Jordan just lost seven hundred dollars and he needs to get monetized on youtube but yeah make sure what was it your tip last time that make sure you you like log out of youtube yeah log out otherwise <laughs> otherwise youtube will be convinced that all you want is jordan content <laughs> and while i am flattered let me tell you i know that's not true <laughs> especially since it'll start pulling up your old stuff <laughs> oh yeah get ready for a, a steady diet of xcom amiibo and uh, maybe some some strange like my Hearthstone and Overwatch phase. You know, you could get too? what? Did you put any marbles up there as well? Uh, uh, no, I don't. I don't really have this marbles. Is, this content. was all. This was all oh, okay. before marbles. Oh, it was before marbles. Oh, okay. and that's the other thing. Get prepared to see a much thinner Jordan. <laughs> I've seen some of the because I've had this playlist running too, and I look at it and I get sad. <laughs> Oh boy, Amy, how about you? What have you got going um, on? So my Facebook is Coincidence Cosplay and Props. My Twitter is at Coincidence Cosp because my name is too long. My Instagram is at Coincidence underscore Cosplay. My TikTok is at Coincidence Cosplay, all one giant word. And my website is www.coincidencecosplay.com and it's very sad. Um, but I've been talking about my Nazgul for like ever and then like not showing anything off. But so sorry, audio people. But I'm holding up a boot and it has... Warbla and foam in a Nazgul boot thing. Stop this is not all the pieces. Words. Yeah, it's it's a thing. Thing. again. We've been discussing um, this. Anyway, so but yeah, problem. so this is from Lindy Labs. And I think I somehow made some of them a little smaller than I want, but mostly I just want the front of the toe to be Nazgulish. And so I am so dang close to being done with that. And yeah. So that's How long have you doing. been working on that one? Oh goodness. Um it I started it about two years ago. But it's been sitting for a lot of that. But I've been working on. I should hope so. If it got up and started walking around. Oh boy, yeah, that'd be mm. scary. We'd all be scared. But uh, no, it's so, probably been about a month, maybe, that I've been working on it on off and on. So Jordan's YouTube channel makes him sad. Amy's website makes her sad. I actually <laughs> almost feel, you know, a little guilty because I'm actually kind of happy about how my podcast is going. Hey. My friend Dylan and I, we talk about board games. It's a lot of fun. The show is called The Innkeeper's Table, and we have new episodes every Friday morning. Uh, the most recent episode that came out last week was a game spotlight on Bang and Bang the Dice Game, which was actually kind of the f- game that got Dylan and I both into board games more intensely a- a- after the fact. Mm-hmm. Because that's just that's the game that he and I, when we were roommates, we would play every week with a group of friends and just really get into it. And so Did you that's talk we... about the specific quote from one of those friends. No, we didn't. You're talking about the, the person who said, Bill, if you weren't dead, I'd bang you. Yes. That one. <laughs> <laughs> referring, <Crazy>. refu- <laughs> referring to the card that says bang, which you play when you want to shoot a car- another player. Just take the compliment, Bill. Only a fool <laughs> turns down a free W. Do we have to put a content warning on this episode now? <laughs> what are you talking know. about? <laughs> um, just anyway. talking about the card. What content? I don't so that was game. the most recent episode. The next episode that's coming out this week is our top three games for five or more players. Our monthly top three list where we're talking about games for larger groups of people. For those of you who want to support the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, but you cannot become patrons, we would love it if you just let your friends know about the show. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, to like and subscribe over on youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. And if you would toss us a good review wherever you listen to us, that would be so much appreciated. 
Also, if you head on over to store.streamelements.com slash Cosmere Studies, we have six merch. Six, S-I-C-S, that's us, merchandise about the show. All right, so final thoughts before we go. Did you spend them when I kind of asked for anything else we should talk about? I think I may have, yeah. Like, I, it's just, he's, he's, he's trippy. Stephen Lee's it's, trippy. It's, it's trippy, but um, I like see, I like these little things that Brandon can sometimes just, you know, bang out and uh, get done. It's, it, and joking aside, like, it's weird to have a Brandon book happen on actual Earth because you know every other time we get we go to earth it's very very different from our earth cuz either superhumans have turned cities into steel or yeah. states are, are are named uh georgia bama and just it makes bill angry your mouth you sorry i was sad you seemed too happy i had to equalize this somehow <laughs> now i'm not sad i'm mad i'll take whatever negative emotion we could have you know it's close you're a monster uh secret uh here is the fact that i have uh, always been one of bill's aspects that and that's why i live in the basement watch we find out that amy and jordan are both actually aspects and i've just been making this podcast of myself rambling for for the past four years look i'm just saying so is uh, bill. i know it's so good ha, is, is anyone listening to the podcast known me or amy before you knew bill think about it uh, also, to Michael, who knew me before all this, don't answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, oh, dear, 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 dear. <laughs> hey, just like the just like the book, it got really dark at the end. Hey, it all came around. Uh, special thanks to our patron producer, Mims Laundry Service. Service so effective, you'll wonder if those stains were all in your mind. In addition to the live episode of the show that stream on twitch.tv slash innkeepers table every two weeks on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, listeners can find our videos on YouTube or audio versions of the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and just about any other service that carries podcasts by searching for Cosmere Studies. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. And if you've got questions, feedback, or suggestions for the show, email them to Cosmere Studies at gmail.com. In our next episode, we are going back to Roshar for another deep dive into a single scene. This time, we're going to be looking at the scene between Kaladin and Shallan in the chasms during Words of Radiance. So be there for the live discussion at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, in two weeks on June 20th, 2022, at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. Until then, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening, and remember, there's, there's always, always another, another secret. secret.